welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Dara O'Brien. Joining this week are Tom Allen, Sophie Duker and Ed Byrne, Milton Jones, Hugh Dennis and Angela Barnes. We start with a round called Picture of the Week. I show the panel a topical image and ask them to tell me what's happening. So, what's going on here? <laughs> oh, new Giacomo catalogues out. <laughs> You'd think that Boris Johnson's probably been very nice to Jeremy Hunt because he needs his sofa to sleep on. <laughs> <laughs> this looks like the sort of stag do where at the end of it a homeless person gets killed. <laughs> But if you look at the walls, they're literally all in a padded cell. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> Boris just won the longest tie competition. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you just look at that photograph and wish they could both be Prime Minister? <laughs> I think the pair of them look like offcuts from the human centipede. <laughs> <laughs> I am absolutely delighted it's the two of them, though, because Hunt Johnson is what the press have been doing, and a Johnson hunt is the kind of game that Boris would play. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have the correct answer. Uh, these are the last two left in the Tory leadership uh, race, and they are Jeremy Hunt and Boris Johnson. Of course. Mm. Thank you very much. <laughs> you. Thank you. Mm. I didn't know it. <laughs> Of course, this is Foreign Secretary Jeremy Hunt and Conservative MP Boris Johnson, pictured at a hustings event in Birmingham this weekend. The pair are the final two candidates for leader of the Conservative Party to be voted on by party members. Why this week was Boris Johnson's campaign derailed, however? It's a very odd story, isn't it? So he was having an altercation with his girlfriend. Yeah. And uh, there was lots of shouting. It was recorded by neighbours. And one of the things that was heard being shouted at him was, get out, get out which doesn't bode very well for Brexit, cos it was shouted about four times, he still couldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> that, some people thought that was the weirdest thing. Get off my laptop, I felt, was the weirdest... <laughs> I've never had an argument at <laughs> which they were going, no, nope, I'm sitting on your laptop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to sit on your laptop, and that's how much I care about you or your family. Uh, get off my laptop. The ironic thing, of course, is that get off me was also heard coming from Jeremy Corbyn's house and they eventually traced it to his garden fence. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Who records their neighbours? I mean, for that you'd need a Sony DBX250 with rumble filter. <laughs> <laughs> They called the police. I'd be calling the police the day that Boris Johnson moved in. <laughs> Boris Johnson moved in next door. What do you mean it's not illegal? <laughs> it just appears like a very intimate living situation. I mean, neighbours, I've always been, you know, is, is they're the flat below. Well, for some reason, I've always thought neighbours side by side. But neighbor, they're the flat below in this thing. So he's now currently living with the girlfriend. I in... love this. Dara's doing really well, so he has to explain what a flat is. To no, you. I. <laughs> Building. I have, I, thank you. I've done my time banging, you know, brooms against ceilings. I've done that. I've been that neighbour. I've not recorded it, but uh, but I've had I've had strong words with the concierge. Uh... I've, I've lived on my own in a flat in Camberwell, and the walls are really thin. And I used to have um, one of those Henry Hoovers because I was lonely and. Um... <laughs> I had to talk to, <laughs> and I couldn't put it in a cupboard because every time I went to shut the door, it just looked at me. So it stayed in the living room, and I used to talk to it all the time. And then one day, I got an invite to my neighbour's housewarming in, uh, addressed to Angela and Henry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was probably some sort of sugar daddy because they must have heard me asking if he wanted his bag changing. <laughs> Imagine if you turned up at the party with the Hoover as that well. That would be amazing. <laughs> but never, never mention it. Never. Uh, this is Henry. This is here. Oh, come in, Angela. Yes. We're very open-minded here. <laughs> Does Henry need anywhere to be plugged in? <laughs> <laughs> Keep him away from the buffet. <laughs> we'll bring it all up. <laughs> we'll all be gone in a second. Oh. Uh, Angela, we're doing a bit of cocaine later if Henry could back away at that point. <laughs> It's weird to think of Boris living in a flat. Like, I think the thing that most horrified the Tory membership <laughs> is that they didn't have a separate wing just for arguments. Like, we have eating rooms and beating rooms. Like, Take it to the mezzanine. <laughs> uh, this is not the arguing floor. 
What do you think of this photo, which is very much the photo of the week, of the happy couple that appeared in the Mail Online? We, I think it was well, taken so long ago, they're playing with a Tamagotchi. <laughs> <laughs> and I think somebody needs to buy them a strimmer for Christmas. Yes. <laughs> is the up. very definition of unkempt. <laughs> <laughs> as a man who used to work as a gardener, that is an affront to me. Yeah. <laughs> is yeah. meadow... If it's a meadow, why is there a patio furniture? <laughs> <laughs> it's like a hundred acre wood, and she's saying, poo sticks, and he's saying, yes, it does, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> But isn't it, he, the thought is that his hair is longer in that photograph than it is now, yeah. isn't it? Mm. But he's just had his hair cut, hasn't he, to make him look more statesman-like, but what he's actually landed on is Benny Hill the early years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think the male just love every grubby little detail. They're like, oh, look at this picture of this busty blonde and his girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> But who's taking the photograph? Uh, the, like, like, well, well, who goes it's for a selfie? selfie. He has a very down. long selfie will you stick. Just, will you just wait in the bushes over there, and at the right <laughs> moment, I'd love it if you could take a romantic picture of us. He doesn't need to wait in the bushes. Look at the length of that grass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> How do they know that whatever they're talking about is romantic? Anyway, like, they could be talking about anything. She's, what, 20 years younger than him? I reckon he's explaining to her who Duncan Goodyear is. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's not a cross between Rebecca Adlington and Matt Lucas. She wouldn't... <laughs> How stupid would we all feel looking at this picture if in the background we saw suddenly Theresa May just skipping through those fields? <laughs> <laughs> I told you! Now I've finally got yeah. time! <laughs> What did we learn, by the way, about Boris Johnson's car during oh, the year? Oh, it's, 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 it's ridiculous. It's filthy. It's a 1995 Toyota Previa. Yeah. Isn't it? And da look at that. Oh. Downing Street, when he moves in, Downing Street is going to be so different. There's going to be a bicycle change to the railings. There's going to be an abandoned car with police aware sticker in the window. <laughs> In a couple of weeks, a top window will open and an irate woman will throw all his clothes onto the pavement. <laughs> Far be it from me to want to <clears throat> stand up for Boris Johnson, but I'm a comedian on tour and that looks all right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My Skoda Fabia's got crest growing in the bottom of it. <laughs> Kind of the same because I've, like, I've, I've, I've got kids, like whatever, and his girlfriend is quite young. Uh, and... <laughs> They're very messy. They, they really are. are. <laughs> OK, how has the leadership rival Jeremy Hunt attacked Johnson? He's attacked him because he won't debate with Jeremy Hunt in public and he didn't do a Sky News thing, yeah. which, which, as you say, might be just because the invitation's in his car and he can't find it. <laughs> He picked this picture of Jeremy Hunt, who, oh, whose God, eyes oh, look man, deader look than that. that of the fish. <laughs> <laughs> it is quite an act to look less alive mm. than a frozen haddock. <laughs> Do you know, they've definitely got the wrong size of baskets in that. You're never going to get that. No. <laughs> they've really sprung this picture on us. I, I, I'm really afraid of fish. Has it gone yet? No. <laughs> oh, no, the fish is beginning to move, Angela. No. <laughs> There's a weird man at the back who yeah. is determinedly walking towards a door that isn't there. <laughs> he called him a coward. He did call him oh, a coward, coward, but not no. in a debate. Yes. Yeah. Yes, he said that he'd debate uh, Boris Johnson anytime, anywhere. Um, but I think that's obviously an exaggeration. You won't debate him on Saturday Kitchen or Naked Attraction. He's not going to be like, <laughs> Freedom! Shorts off! I'll take you on an art attack and let's see how you deal with that situation. <laughs> Fish, you'll have a bus. It'll be amazing. <laughs> yeah. You think about the date that's been set for when we have to leave the EU yeah. and how important it is who the Prime Minister should be on that date. Yep. That Jeremy Hunt's campaign hasn't gone with. It's got to be Hunt for next October. Uh... <laughs> no, I think I've just realised why it's not that. Just... <laughs> Hunt, uh, Tack Johnson for refusing to answer questions about uh, his plans for, for Brexit. Uh, and then came with a hashtag, uh, Bojo No Show. Oh. Oh, oh that old uh, show, um, Bojo No Show, faux show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd vote for him if he changed his name from Jeremy to Easter Egg. <laughs> In other news, why have some French comedians come under fire? 
Oh, Nick, for Nick and material. For stealing yeah. material, yeah. Ah. Stealing material from whom? Uh, for, uh, from Jerry Seinfeld, from Dave Chappelle, just basically from, from English speaking comedians yeah. and then doing it in French. Uh. And to be fair, it's not like we were ever going to go there and do it in French. <laughs> <laughs> You go, mate. The thing is, they would have got away with it if they hadn't tried to do Peter Kay's garlic bread bit. <laughs> <laughs> garlic bread? Surely this is just oh. bread. What is he talking about? Le pan. Le pan. Le pan. Le pan. Garlic. Le pan. Le pan. Quoi? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I've done a lot of gigs in France. Well, I stormed the Bastille. <laughs> It's probably gone on forever. It's our own bloody fault for never bothering to learn their language. That's... Oh, hang on. Um... I've spoken their language and I've tried to do material that they do, like, you know, where is the swimming pool? <laughs> <laughs> Down the road and on the left. I love to visit the historical monuments. <laughs> <laughs> is that my famous bibliotheque routine? <laughs> It's only comedy if it comes from the joke-producing region of France. If it doesn't... <laughs> <laughs> joke-producing region, then you have to just call it sparkling wit. <laughs> <laughs> OK, we play a round called Boris Johnson and his Chamber of Secrets. <laughs> <laughs> this game involves Tom Allen and Milton Jones. If you could make your way to the performance area, please. <laughs> this round is a stand-up challenge. I launch the wheel of news and wherever it chooses to stop, one of our performers must step forward and talk about that subject. OK, here we go. Let's spin the wheel. The first subject is school. Who wants to come on that? Tom. Hello. <laughs> I, um, I went to quite a rough school. I know! <laughs> isn't it moving? And it was a sort of school where people would come up to you and say things like, Hey, you, do you want to fight, dude? Do you want to fight? Is that why I look at me like that? Yeah, you want to fight? Yeah, don't you want to fight? Don't you want to fight? And I'd always say, oh, no, thank you. <laughs> but thanks for thinking of me. <laughs> Those girls could be so cruel. <laughs> At my school, to avoid getting picked on, everyone had the same of everything. So everyone had, like, the same pencil case. It was a pencil case that was made to look like a packet of Walker's crisps. <laughs> and in it, everyone had the same Oxford math set, which was like a tin pencil case, which contained a ruler, maybe a foldable ruler, for travel. <laughs> a, fold a foldable ruler, which was great for underlining things, wasn't it? Until you got to the middle. <laughs> Big bump in the middle. And a set square, which wasn't a square, was it? It was a triangle. And and, and a compass. Oh, I'm glad I learned how to use a compass. <laughs> Not a day goes by. <laughs> it's a perfect circle. It's got a hole in the middle, but it's a perfect circle. And, like, when do you even get to use that math set? I mean, occasionally you'll get to do proper grown-up maths, or math, as they call it in America, don't they? But we do it more than once. <laughs> When you get to do things like trigonometry and Sokatoa. Do you remember that? Sokatoa. Sokatoa. Do you remember that? Sokatoa. That's a thing. Sokatoa. Sine equals opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine equals adjacent over hypotenuse. I mean, now, as an adult looking back, it would have been nice, wouldn't it, if they spent maybe half an hour or even just like ten minutes, just ten minutes going, this is a pension scheme. <laughs> Return. This is how you mend a broken heart. This is how you tell an estate agent to fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Tom. <laughs> OK, that leaves us with Milton. Let's see what your topic is. Let's spin the wheel. <laughs> and the topic is shopping. Those reward cards are rubbish, aren't they? I've got too many points on one of them, and now I'm not allowed to drive. <laughs> <laughs> it's really important, if you buy something, of course, uh, to read all the instructions. I don't know if you've ever tried to fill a baboon with helium. <laughs> <laughs> Prit is not the best lip salve I've ever used. <laughs> I couldn't complain. 
Southern comfort tastes nice. Ordinary comfort tastes like fabric softener. <laughs> But at least your burp smell of summer meadows. <laughs> when I was in America, I really got into the culture, so I went into a shop and the guy said, have a nice day, and I didn't, so I sued him. Down the call if this is the answer, what is the question? On the board are six categories. Sophie, which category would you like? Uh, could I please have some world news? OK, world news it is. The answer <coughs> is ten minutes. What is the question? Is it the average length of a woman's orgasm, if you're doing it right? <laughs> <laughs> now you tell me. Uh... <laughs> Who's bringing down that average? <laughs> Is it how long is Chukka Amuna planning to stay in the Lib Dem? <laughs> <laughs> is it how long will Boris Johnson let you borrow his laptop before he gets really arsy? <laughs> is it how long is <clears throat> too long to put the smoke alarm on snooze? <laughs> <laughs> is it how long you'd last on Love Island if you tried to start a book group? <laughs> Is it how much of Love Island I watched before I realised it was the death knell for all human culture? <laughs> <laughs> Is it how long I was backstage before Ed asked if he could buy some weed off me? <laughs> <laughs> Is it how long can I spend in Lush before I cough up a lung? <laughs> Is it uh, how long does it take the average 14-year-old to disable the parental controls on a Wi-Fi router? <laughs> Is it at any given moment how far is Boris Johnson from fucking it all up? <laughs> <laughs> is it how much of my life I've been straight? <laughs> <laughs> is it how long it takes Prince Philip to do a 30-minute drive? <laughs> is, it, is this to do with Donald Trump? Is it, it is to Donald is Trump. With how long to spare did he call off the airstrike against a rat? That's so, absolutely yeah. right. Thank you very much, Ed. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the question I was looking for was how many minutes away was Donald Trump from launching an airstrike in Iran last week? This is the news that President Trump called off the strike after being told that it could kill as many as 150 people. What phrase did he use to describe the state of readiness? Ready break, he said. <laughs> <laughs> no, he said they were cocked and loaded. Oh, right. Which sounds like a terrible Tinder buyer. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, locked and loaded is the phrase. He said, uh, yeah. he said cocked and loaded is just like a frat party. Uh... He actually said, though, he's got missiles pointing at a map of Iran. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ruin the map. Yeah. <laughs> if the White House nerds can, like, shut down Iranian weapon systems, how come they can't lock Trump out of Twitter? Yeah. <laughs> How do you think they did the cyber attack? Do you think they sent them, like, an email going, would you like your uranium to be slightly more enriched? <laughs> <laughs> sent you a birthday message. <laughs> and they wanted airstrikes. I mean, how would people breathe? <laughs> uh, meanwhile, what's going on here? Mm. Free hugs! Oh, yeah. Free <laughs> hugs, everybody! Oh, oh, is he, oh is look, he's saying... been holding hands with all his Jewish friends! Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy Corbyn summing up his attitude to Brexit by walking down the middle of the road. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's saying, when's the bus due? <laughs> <laughs> the Jew's ignoring him. <laughs> <laughs> Right He's really not shaking off this Jew thing, is he? <laughs> <laughs> Did he misunderstand the idea of taking his message nationwide and he's taking it to nationwide? <laughs> <laughs> is it passers by pretend it's raining to avoid making eye contact? <laughs> 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 is this the death of the high street? <laughs> <laughs> I spoke to these shoppers. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? It's raining! It's raining! 
Welcome to me. My friend has a jacket on her head. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it does look a bit Jesus-like, doesn't it? He sort of held himself in a way that's like, mm, my followers, scum. Even I can stop the rage. <laughs> and his initials are JC. Oh, yeah. my God, it all points to only one thing. Uh, <laughs> he doesn't like Jews. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Corbyn is in the news because it's expected that if Boris Johnson becomes Prime Minister, he will call for a vote of no confidence just one day later. Yeah. Now, that, to me, is incredibly dangerous. Because think of the damage that Boris could do in 24 hours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you think it literally, it? It literally should be standing quicker. as Boris yeah. goes steps in. <laughs> 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 the whole thing is completely unstable. And it's at times like this, people are looking to the likes of us to make sense. <laughs> Because, because I don't have a clue, and I know he doesn't give a shit. <laughs> I don't understand how you can do a vote of no confidence against someone who is the epitome of confidence. Like, Boris yeah. has so much machismo, he's basically like a testicle sprinkled with some straw. <laughs> Imagine how hurtful, though, if somebody said to you, oh, we're going to have a vote of no confidence. Imagine, I wouldn't be able to leave the house. Like, <laughs> I don't worry enough about my pocket squares and my ties. If someone went, no, we've got no confidence in you, I'd go, oh, I've got none in me either. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm an idiot. I don't know why I did it. I know, it's a stupid idea. It's a stupid idea. <laughs> It would be the killer heckle, wouldn't it? Oh. Just if you're in the middle of a show. So anyway, uh, hey, it's great to be here in the club. Yeah. Somebody said, uh, we've taken a vote of no confidence. <laughs> I once had a heckle saying, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry about that, Milton. I was just reading from the game. I once had a heckle of blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> The other heckle I had is, these are just words. Now we come to scenes we'd like to see. So if everyone can make their way over to the performance area, I'll read out this week's topics and then we'll see what our panellists can come up with. <laughs> OK, here we go. The first subject is... Unlikely lines from a horror movie. Here's Johnson! <laughs> I had goosebumps yesterday. Well, I am a goose and it was my birthday. <laughs> Welcome to the House of Horror. <laughs> Sorry, House of Freezer. <laughs> So your name's Hannibal and you're a cannibal. So what does your friend Hedophile do? <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, it's me, your token black friend from the start of the movie. <laughs> I survived! <laughs> 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 I'm sorry, I've just seen the price of this rail ticket. <laughs> they call me Jigsaw, because you have to be desperately bored to do me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got a sixth sense. It's called style. Who wants to see dead people when you've got clothes like this? <laughs> The return of the mummy. Oi, come back. <laughs> <laughs> Your greatest fears are realised. Comedians are getting younger and you don't understand any of their references. <laughs> Enjoy your probiotic yoghurt. <laughs> <laughs> Nos fera tu! Manchester City, one. <laughs> you know, maybe the real monster was the friends we made along the way. <laughs> Ah, 
So this is the very room where the jazz musician Fats Domino died. Apparently he collapsed onto a family member who collapsed onto another family member who collapsed onto <laughs> another family member. Who <laughs> now you've had sex, it will follow you wherever you go. I mean, sorry, congratulations on your new baby. <laughs> Actually, the 4G coverage in these woods is actually pretty good. <laughs> what do you mean I can't buy a zombie? <laughs> this is the body shop. <laughs> OK, the next topic is... Unlikely things to hear in a survival show. No, everyone's dead. <laughs> I just love sleeping under the stars. Pavarotti was a bit tricky, though. He was massive. <laughs> Night time, and most of the gang are enjoying a grilled fish. Nigel the vegan is still foraging for falafel. <laughs> <laughs> and these worms are actually edible and are a really good source of protein. Yet Brian still refuses to go down on me until I've seen a doctor. <laughs> you can survive this. Just barricade yourself in the house, board all the windows, don't answer any questions. In four weeks, you'll be Prime Minister. <laughs> ben is all alone. He's fallen down a ravine and has no choice but to saw his arm off with a penknife, while the camera crew watch him. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the last episode of Survivor, because we've eaten Bear Grylls. <laughs> Three years I've been on this island with nothing to look at but the sea and the sand and that bridge. Under these conditions, you've got to sacrifice some creature comforts. Sometimes you wake up in the morning, you know that the first thing you've got to do that day is put on wet socks. But, you know, you've got to wank into something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here to teach you the essentials of bushcraft. You'll need a sharp blade, a mirror, and some diamante pearls for the vajazzle. <laughs> All you have to do is put a little string on the caterpillar's head and wait a couple of months, you've got a lovely little kite. <laughs> and you can tell when the rare Irish bullfrog is ready to mate by its distinctive buzzing sound. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Dave was on the beach catching crabs off of Tracy. Welcome back to Love Island. <laughs> there is no food here and there is no medicine. But we had a referendum and now we just have to get on with it. <laughs> Remember, the duck's natural predator is the pancake. Well, tonight I'll be eating in the bush, which is a first for me. <laughs> you don't understand, man, it was the biggest barbecue ever! They had bear grills! <laughs> <laughs> in these icy conditions, your tongue can get stuck to things. That's the last time I kissed Bear Grylls' ass. <laughs> I'm standing very still, cos over 30 feet away, there's a huge water buffalo, and he's painting my picture. <laughs> <laughs> and at the end of that, the boys go to Andrew Hugh <laughs> That's the end of the show. This week's winners are... Tom Allen, Sophie Jacob, and...
Commiserations to Milton Jones, Hugh Dennis and Angela Bynes. Thank you for watching. I'm Darren Green. Good night. Hi, I'm Ellis James. And I'm John Robbins. We broadcast the show on BBC Radio 5 Live every Friday afternoon. It's proved more divisive than expected, and feedback has ranged from high praise to calling us, quote, a poor man's hairy bikers. Listen to the Ellis James and John Robbins podcast now on the BBC Sounds app.